Today in Baseball History! Hi! Uh, welcome to another installment of Today in Baseball History. We're talking about May the 25th and everything that happened on May the 25th. Well, not everything, but a lot of cool things that happened on May the 25th um, in baseball. Um, I'm wearing my Toronto Blue Jays uh, t-shirt today, but I will be wearing, yay, some jerseys of some of the people that I'm going to talk about today. So uh, let's dive right into it. All right, the first one. We're going to be talking about uh, May the 25th of 1906. Um, ooh. Uh, May 25th, 1906 is a date that um, somebody was born that you may never have heard of. Um, in regards to baseball or anything else. His name was Martin Digo. Now, his, his name, his last name was pronounced Digo, but it was actually uh, spelt uh, D-I-H-I-G-O. You get Digo out of that, I don't know. Anyway, this guy uh, was born in 1906, and he spent over uh, 27, almost 28 years in organized professional baseball. Where? Not in the major leagues, unfortunately, because he was Cuban. So he played uh, in the Cuban leagues, he played in the Mexican leagues, he played in the Negro leagues, but never got a chance to play in major league baseball. Why am I telling you this? So the dude was born in 1906 on May the 25th. Martin Digo was one of the first, and in many people's eyes, the best uh, two-way players that ever played baseball. When I say two-way, I'm thinking of uh, Otani of today, where he was a pitcher and he was a position player as well. Hell of a hitter in uh, all those leagues and one of the best pitchers to come around in those leagues as well. He played from 1922. I'm just going to make sure that I got this right again. Uh, he played from 1922 to 1950. In these leagues. So 28 years of uh, organized baseball and uh, he played every single position on a baseball field except for catcher. He never played catcher. But that didn't really matter. It was all about him being uh, one of the best pitchers to ever pitch in baseball and one of the best hitters to ever hit in baseball as well. And he did this as one of those two-way players that we talk about uh, so much these days. And we kind of, we kind of forget that, you know, Babe Ruth, uh, at the beginning of his career and at times throughout his career, um, was a pitcher as well. He was, uh, he was one of the greatest hitters, obviously, of all time. But even as a pitcher, he was a great hitter because that just didn't come around when he started playing in the outfield. He was always a great hitter, but he always uh, he was a, a great pitcher as well. But uh, this Martin Digo, he was one of the first that people really recognized as one of these great players that could do everything. Now, if you're a fan of baseball like me, you know that the the Cuban leagues, the American, uh, sorry, the uh, Mexican leagues, the uh, the uh, Negro leagues, they didn't really keep the best records. So um, places like BaseballReference.com, where I get a lot of my information from. And if you have never been and are any kind of baseball fan, you have to go to BaseballReference.com. So they, they dig deep and they try to get as many of the actual scorecards or, or, or um, you know, what happened during the game that they can compile into statistics for nerds like me. So that, at the best that they could do... Um, you know, those, those teams back in uh, in the early 20s, they used to uh, barnstorm a lot. They used to go all over the place. Uh, in the Negro Leagues, they said that they would play up to 300 games a year sometimes because they were just playing everywhere that they could, really. Uh, it was the same thing with the Cuban Leagues. It was the same thing with the uh, Mexican Leagues. And uh, when Martin was playing in these leagues, he would actually play a lot more games than were actually recorded as official stats. But what we do know is that these official stats, when he actually was playing, he was a 400 hitter uh, for much of his time. Uh, again, uh, the stats 
we'll only show maybe 100 at-bats at a season or maybe 200 at-bats at a season. But still, yeah, I mean, he was one of those consistent kind of guys that could hit a ball at any level, at any time, whenever he wanted to. And if they needed him to pitch, he would he would do the same thing. Now, this is a guy that would win game after game after game. His, uh, his winning percentage in these um, Mexican-Cuban Negro Leagues was... Very, very high. It was uh, maybe not as high as Whitey Ford, but again, he wasn't playing for the New York Yankees of 1927 or 1952 or whatever. Uh, so he, I mean, he was just one of those guys that would would always win, that people would follow. He was a major, major star. So anyway, look him up. Uh, you'll be amazed at some of the things that this guy did. His name again, Martin, spelled Martin, uh, Digo. Spelt D I H I G O. Born on this day, May the 25th, 1906. Second thing that happened on May, well, at least the second thing that I'm going to tell you about that happened on um, May 25th in baseball. 1935. There's this big dude that they used to call Babe, um, George Herman Ruth. Babe Ruth, 1935. He's now playing for the Boston Braves. He's not playing a lot because, you know, he is on his last legs. In fact, 1935 is going to be his last year in Major League Baseball. And he did not do well. He, it was, I mean, people, people would come out to see him because he was Babe Ruth. He was the most popular baseball player ever. And, there, and there's no comparison. It doesn't matter if, if you think somebody else was better than him. It doesn't matter if you think that, uh, you know, he was just some big lug that would take the stage whenever he wanted to. He was the most popular baseball player to ever play the game. He saved baseball in the 1920s. Crazy. Anyway, 1935, it's his last year. He's not doing well. He can barely stand up at the plate. His knees are so bad. I don't know if he's been diagnosed with cancer yet. I think he, he passed away in 1948, so he still had a few years left. But, uh, you know... Uh, hot dogs, beer, partying, all that kind of stuff. It's starting to wear on him. He's in his mid to late 30s now. And uh, and things don't look good. Anyway, 1935. Uh, May the 25th, he plays for the Boston Braves, and he gets up to the plate at certain times of the game, as baseball players do, and hits three home runs. Flashes of the old Babe Ruth, Crowd goes nuts. Three home runs for the Babe. He had a single in the game as well, so he went four for four in the game. And I think, uh, I've read it earlier, I'm not too sure right now, but I think he uh, he drove in six, six or seven runs that game as well. I think it was six runs. But why is that important? Is because it was the last three home runs, and obviously the last home run that Babe Ruth will ever hit in Major League Baseball, May the 25th, 1935. So he hits number 712, 713, and 714. And obviously the 714 home runs is a record that seems untouchable. Seems like one of those records that is never, ever going to be even close to being beaten until a man named Hank Aaron comes along in the 70s and does it himself in 1974, I think it was. that. But still, it's a record that lasts for 40 years. And, uh, and it, it's, it's bittersweet. I think he only played like six or seven more games that whole year. He hit, he hit like 181. Um, and again, he was, he was basically just out there to draw the fans in because he was not at all the player that he was, uh, you know, back in the 20s. But on this date, May the 25th, 1935, Babe Ruth hits his last home run. Hello, story number three, May the 25th, 1951. As you see, I have put on a jersey because who I am going to talk about now is somebody you may have heard of uh, when people talk about baseball. Uh, his name was, was, well, still is, because he's still alive. Is he still alive? 
Anyway, uh, his name, Willie Mays. Willie Mays Hayes. Say hey, kid. Willie Mays makes his major league debut on this day, May the 25th, way back in 1951. Now, I, I have the jersey. Um, it's a San Francisco jersey because I actually ordered a New York Giants jersey and they sent me San Francisco. But it's still a Willie Mays. And as you can see, it's beautiful. That's my dog, Bowie, by the way. I have another dog over here. That's Lemmy. Lemmy, Bowie. I'm also a music fan, obviously. Anyway, so Willie Mays, number 24, right there. This was when he was playing for the San Francisco Giants. Right. Hi. So Willie Mays uh, is is playing his first major league game. Now, people know about Willie Mays before 1951. Willie Mays was tearing up um, the minor leagues. Like, the, the, this guy, everybody knew before Willie Mays even picked up a bat in the major leagues that he was going to be a superstar. Um, he, he had time in the Negro Leagues as well. He played a little bit in the Negro Leagues as a young kid. Maybe 17, I think he was, when he played some time in the Negro Leagues. But uh, but we're talking about the majors now. And uh, May 25th, 1951, uh, Willie Mays plays his first game. Uh, center field for the New York Giants. Uh, I want to say it was at the Polo Grounds. I'll, I'll check that. Uh, <laughs> but he was in center field. Uh, he batted third in the order. Like, this is a young kid playing his very first game. He's batting third in the order. So people knew that this guy could hit. Fortunately, his first at-bat strikes out, and he goes 0 for 5. Not a great day at the plate. But you knew great things were going to happen with uh, Mr. Mays. And, and in fact, I think it was just four games later, he finally collected his first hit. And wouldn't you know it, his first hit was a home run. And, uh, off he went. Uh, there's discussion always with baseball geeks like me who the greatest player was in in all of baseball ever. And, and talking about five tool players, you know, guys that could hit, hit for power, run, uh, throw with accuracy and power, and do something else as the fifth tool. What's the fifth tool? I'm the fifth tool. Anyway, um, so yeah, Willie Mays, uh, is usually on the top of that list. Some people put others on the top of the list, but at least, like Willie Mays, is usually top three or four anyway. For this guy, Willie Mays, easily top three to ever play the game. From what I know, I wish, oh my lord, do I wish that I could actually have seen him play live, but uh, never happened. But Willie Mays, first game. May 25th, 1951. Hi. Fourth story of May the 25th. If you notice, I have changed my jersey once again. Texas. Because um, we're going to be talking about uh, somebody that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, probably the best known, maybe the best Canadian player to ever play the game of baseball, Major League Baseball. His name, Ferguson, Fergie Jenkins. And uh, the only, I, I know that, you know, Fergie Jenkins, I, I would have loved to have had a, had a Cubs jersey for Fergie because that's where most of his success came from is when he was playing for the Cubs. But I realized that I didn't have a jersey for anybody from Texas. And I already had a Nolan Ryan jersey. Uh, from Houston, so I didn't want to get a Nolan Ryan jersey, so I'm thinking Texas, 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 it is Fergie Jenkins, and this is what it looks like, if you can see it here, it's Texas, obviously, Texas, and we got Jenkins on the back there, number 31, big Fergie, the dogs are impressed, not really, but anyway, so this is about Fergie Jenkins. And on May the 25th, 1982, Fergie, at that time, I think he was playing for uh, the, uh, what was it, the, he was playing for the Cubs at that time. He was actually playing for the Cubs in 1982, and he strikes out Gary Templeton for his 3,000th 
strikeout of his career. Unbelievable. In 1982, he was only the seventh pitcher in Major League history to have struck out 3,000 or more uh, batters. So uh, and a pretty huge accomplishment. And again, because he was born in Canada, Saskatchewan, uh, he, he, I don't think he was Saskatchewan. I have no idea. I just felt like saying Saskatchewan. But he might have been Saskatchewan. For some reason now, I think it was Chatham, Ontario. But we'll figure that out later as well. Anyway, because he was Canadian, to accomplish something like that um, was just I, like pride. Pride, pride, pride exuding out of my body. So on this day, May 25th, 1982, Fergie Jenkins makes history by striking out his 3,000th batter. I'm going to keep wearing Fergie for uh, the rest of the show, if that's okay with you guys. That's okay. Um, the next item up for bids, May the 25th, 2007. Uh, Jamie Moyer, you might have heard him. He played in the major leagues for 49 years. No, not 49. It, it seems like it was 49 years. He, the guy never stopped pitching. I think he retired... Literally, I think he retired, he was 48 years old. Like, he just kept on going. But anyway, Jamie Moyer, on this day, in 2007, beat the Atlanta Braves. So what? Who cares? You should care, because now knowing that he beat the Atlanta Braves, he has become, or this has become, the longest stretch of time between winning a game against a team, and then winning a game against that same team. So, in Jamie Moyer's 20, like, seven-year career, he beat the Atlanta Braves fairly early in his career. And then 20 years later, beat them again. So it's in, it's a major league record, the longest stretch of time, and I'm going to use my hands one more time, the longest stretch of time, the dogs don't like it, but I'm going to keep telling them. Jamie Moyer! Longest stretch of time between wins uh, against this uh, the same team. Does that make sense? So he beat... <laughs> let's go back again. He beat the Atlanta Braves in 1987. He would not beat the Atlanta Braves again until 2007 on this day, May the 25th. I hope that's clear. I thought it was kind of cool. Okay, the last thing I have for you is uh, May the 25th, 2011. A guy named Jojo Reyes, who at the time was playing for the Toronto Blue Jays. Again, Toronto, uh, which is my team, and I don't even remember the guy, so this might tell you why. Uh, he started the game, and he did not win. Big deal. Toronto Blue Jays, they lose a lot of games. But on this day, May the 25th, 2011, he ties a record for not winning his 28th consecutive start. Doesn't set the record. It, it, he actually tied the record. He tied the record with a guy named Cliff Curtis and a guy named uh, Matt Keel. But can you imagine going 28 straight starts and you can't buy a win? He actually went 0 for 13 in those 28 starts. So he, lost, he was able to lose 13 games. Well done. But he, uh, he couldn't buy a win. Apparently his next uh, start, he, he finally won. So that sort of cut the record off there. But the record still remains 28 consecutive starts without a win held by those three guys. Jojo Reyes did it today, or I guess didn't do it today, on uh, May 25th, 2011. So I hope you enjoyed uh, those stories uh, for May the 25th. And uh, if you like them please subscribe or like or tell all your friends or do whatever you have to do to let people know that these stories are on the uh what they call the internets nowadays um please like it please wear baseball jerseys please eat hot dogs and please watch baseball as much as possible see ya